a, a more, uh, in, you know, a very perceptual question, and that's sure. towards, you know, I like to get into because I'm talking to people like you and have a lot of um, because you're on the other side of dealing with the clients. You know how many sales sure. and why they buy it, etc. There's a definite um, change in recent years in terms of. Uh, you know, Apple or Mac, and, and, and also Linux is actually getting some traction in this area for editing solutions. Sure. Um, can you um, talk towards the fact that uh, like Apple is a very, very popular platform? Yep. Uh, but Apple, in some ways, uh, says it's very much um, in love with their creative people and, and the pros, but they don't tend to really act that way. For example, it's been three plus years for the this supposedly new Mac Pro to come sure. out, which is a little bit, uh, a bit strange. And secondly, you know all the laptops are coming out with A-based processors, these new lightweight-based processors, which aren't really suitable for editing because, yes, they're much more power efficient, but their peak performance and uh, CPU frequencies aren't really that, that high, and uh, a single-threaded peak performance is a very good thing to have in an editing system. Sure. Yep. So the fact that those sort of things are happening, do you see uh, any sort of uh, moved it away from the Apple, or in some ways, the pros may be wanting to move to more professional, like Linux-based solutions. And do you think that in the future, you know, after the, the uh, there was a big flash, um, uh, flasher on a, a comment in in your um, on your website about porting it to Linux, yep. and that generated a, a quite a lot of interest for a while. <laughs> Um, can you actually, you know, give us a, a, a flag in the future that that's a possibility, or it's it's still a bit too early to talk about? Can you? I think you know. So a couple of comments there. Yeah. I think that you know companies like Apple, um, who actually, you know, of course we have been competitive very much in the past with Final Cut Pro. Um, we also have a great relationship with Apple. That's right. Um, you know, going back to the Premier Rush scenario, you can go to any Apple retail location on the planet, and you will find Adobe Premier Rush on every iPad Pro in those stores. Um, so that's kind of interesting. We also have things like ProRes and Windows now because of the relationship we have with Apple. So I think that you know Apple's made decisions around where they believe is the right priorities for their business. Yeah, but I understand. I, I, I don't think you can ever turn away from Apple. Yeah, I mean, Apple, but, but you know, you I'm an Apple to, fan. But you, need, you know, <laughs> but you need to turn towards the pro and their needs a little bit stronger now in terms of that. I, I know it's harder to support Linux. It's got more issues. But when we're talking about these... 4K or 8K, high dynamic range, sure. high bit depth files. Um, you need machines, specifically designed machines, that aren't cookie cut Apple devices. Right, right. And I think, you know, so a couple of points on that. I think the, um, uh, you know, the hardware that our professionals are using, yes. again, I mentioned the professional market is our bread and butter. Yes. And that is always going to be that case. Um, at the same time, I think, it's specifically to the reference, I think there was a, we use a system called the User Voice. Um, and user voice is a way for our customers to communicate directly to us. Uh, that's, that's, the that's, that's the platform. That's the platform. And that right. actually it created the fund that we saw where there was like, I think, 4,000 votes for a Linux version. That's right, yes. We actually found that there was a script that was running that, that <laughs> somebody ran to make that happen. So that was just kind of interesting. But I, it's something that we monitor closely, especially when you see eight, like we have the Olympics coming in 2020. There's 8K workflows coming that's out right. from, say, places like NHK processing that, especially like 8K, 10-bit color, you know, I mean, this is kind of, this is not trivial. Yes. There is always a natural push to, well, can we offload that to a farm? Can we offload that to other pro platforms that are really just optimized for performance? Two things, though. One, going across the broad landscape of our users, it is still pretty minimal that we see the response for that or the request for that. And at the same time, we also map this back because it's not the first time that we've had, you know, hey, when is this going to come on Linux? Um, the interesting thing is, is that we tend to find those as inflection points. You know, when there is a new thing like a 4K or an 8K standard being right. approached, there's then a panic to really kind of get, oh my God, we've got to squeeze out as much hardware. Then there's kind of a natural tail to, oh, well, the commodity hardware can handle it for the most part. So I think we're still in a wait and see mode. Um, you know, one of the things I will say, uh, Premier Rush is coming soon to Android. And because of that, it's um, on the Android platform, which is probably as close to Linux as you can ever see. Yeah. That is the same code as Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Audition. Okay. So it is something that we inspect. I'm not going to give you an indicator that, that it's coming anytime soon. Right. But I do think um, you know, having that close relationship with our customers in informs us. Yeah. We're probably not seeing that signal as strong as we would need to see it uh, yeah, right I now. I understand, yeah. But um, uh, we keep a close eye on it. Anyway, thank you very much for being very honest about those sort of questions. No I appreciate that.
Anyway, thanks, Steve. Cool. And that's James Gardner at NAB 2019 at the Adobe booth. Bye for now.